the space rover paddled by shift line just got spacier. In this video, I'm talking about Astronaut 5. This is the second stereo rover paddled by shift line after Everest, which I've been using in my paddleboard uh, for the past six months or longer. Speaking of evolution, the first version of Astronaut had only eight reverb algorithms. The next one had three more, 11 in total. And then there was the Astronaut 3 with 22 algorithms, which was later released in a Eurorack format for modular synths. Technically, it was the version 4, but they've decided to skip the number for some reason. And now we've got Astronaut 5, which is actually more than just two of these in one enclosure. It has the same 22 algorithms updated for stereo, and now it's possible to save user settings into device's memory as presets. But more on that later. Now, this is a quick unboxing that I filmed a few weeks ago, and it is literally quick because there isn't much in the box, it's just a paddle and a sticker. I remember in the box with Astronaut 3, there was a card with all presets listed in it, which was really good to have. For this pedal, it can be downloaded from the official website. As always, links below. Okay, let's take a close look at the pedal. It has two foot switches, two multifunctional foot switches, because these do more than one thing, five knobs. Each of them controls two parameters. The primary parameter is listed on the top, the secondary one is on the bottom, and it can be accessed with a tap or alt foot switch pressed down. The central knob provides access to 11 presets per bank, three banks, reverb, effects and user defined, character and volume, decay and high pass filter, uh, cross mix and low pass filter, delay time and uh, stereo control. Tap tempo subdivisions on the right switch. On the back of the pedal, we've got two inputs, two outputs left for mono, control input, power supply input, and a USB-C for firmware updates and fine tuning. Nothing on the sides, nothing on the front, rubber feet on the bottom. The pedal requires nine volts, 200 milliamps, or 12 volts, 160 milliamps. The power supply is not included. Here's the weight of the pedal compared to the weight of the reference pedal that we all know very well. And here's the same in pounds. They're almost the same weight. Square-shaped enclosure, uh, often used for pedals with the outputs in the back, similar to, for instance, Nuix Atlantic, just the same size, and uh, one and a half times, approximately one and a half times wider than a standard brick. But if you want the exact numbers, here they are, the width, the depth, and the height. So, let's check what this pedal sounds like. For this demonstration, I'm using this Hanley Benton Fusion 3 in shell pink, which lately became my go-to guitar for multiple reasons. I'm plugged into the Hughes & Cat Black Spirit 200, which is right there. The amp goes into two notes Capture X, and the pedal is connected right after the load box. First, let's check what all the knobs do, and later we'll listen to all the algorithms and presets. <laughs> DK controls the length of the reverb tail from very short to endless, and for delays, it sets the number of repeats. The secondary function for this knob will be a high pass filter. The crossfade knob works the same way for all algorithms and basically mixes the fully dry sound on the left with the fully wet sound on the right.
the secondary function here is a low pass filter. The low pass filter is applied only to the wet sound and it works the same way for delays. That way you can get the whole spectrum from what they call an analog delay, somewhere here or lower, to the digital one. The character knob is algorithm specific and will control different things depending on the chosen algorithm. That might for example be a modulation depth or an octave volume. And here's another example, this time with a reverb. The secondary function here provides a 10 dB boost for the overall sound. The time knob controls the amount of pre-delay for reverbs and a delay length for the effects in the red bank. It also controls the width from mono to a full stereo. That of course works with delays as well. I can temporarily set the decay to maximum by pressing and holding the left foot switch and that will lead to infinite delays. And here is how it works with the reverb.
There are many other functions hidden in the paddle. For instance, it talks MIDI. Also, many parameters may be fine-tuned if you connect the pedal to a computer. But instead of going down that rabbit hole, let's shortly listen to all algorithms. I'll give you the red bank first. Okay, and here are reverbs.
So, uh, this video turned out much longer than I expected. Astronaut is indeed a powerful pedal and it is a lot of fun to play with. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in one of my next videos someday soon. Goodbye everyone.